Welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. As a lung doctor, I use many tools to evaluate your lung, starting with the physical exam. You may have a lot of different symptoms, but it's up to me to evaluate objectively and apply it to you. So today, we're gonna to talk about the tools that I use to evaluate your lung. You guys all know that the lung is my favorite organ, and we all know the common symptoms that you present with. Coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, fatigue, among many others. But as you breathe in and out right in front of me, I have to find a way to discover what it looks like inside your lung as you're breathing. The first thing I do after I listen to your story is I put my stethoscope on your back and on your front to listen to you breathe. The stethoscope is a resonator I place against the chest. I'm listening for wheezing. That's when your airways are narrow, like in asthma. I am also listening for ronchi, which tells me there is material within that bronchial or within those bronchi. This sound occurs on expiration or inspiration and expiration. Strider is a high-pitched sound I hear in the neck. Its presence informs me about upper airway narrowing. Crackles are sounds I hear against the chest wall as the lung expands. They sound a bit like Velcro kind of pulling off your shoe. It also sounds like Rice Krispies and milk. It can signify inflammation or scarring, but usually based on exam, I'm gonna order the next couple tests. One test is a pulmonary function test or spirometry. The difference between pulmonary function tests, a full pulmonary function test and spirometry is pretty simple. Spirometry measures the lung volumes, forced vital capacity, which is the amount of air that can be forcibly exhaled after taking a deep breath. But spirometry also measures FEV1, which is the amount of air forcibly exhaled in one second. The ratio of FEV1 to FVC tells us if your airway is obstructed. If your ratio is less than about 70%, we will say you have obstruction, which represents asthma and or COPD. If your ratio is normal, it's normal but your ratio can be normal and you have smaller than predicted lung volumes. If you have smaller than predicted lung volumes, this means you're breathing with a smaller lung or a lung that feels smaller. This can be due to fluid like in heart failure or big pleural effusion or inflammation or scarring like an in interstitial lung disease. When you look at full pulmonary function tests, we've included other lung volumes like total lung capacity, which helps us assess hyperinflation and residual volume, which allows us to assess air trapping. Obviously, bad asthmatics hold on to more air, so their residual volume might be a lot higher. Along these same lines, there is an object called a peak flow meter. This is a small handheld pocket device that measures your ability to blow air out. In asthmatics and in people with chronic bronchitis or emphysema, this device can let us know if you are beginning to have an exacerbation. The device quantifies how well your lungs are working in real time, and it's real easy to use. The next objective assessment is the ultrasound. I love the ultrasound. My PAs know I love the ultrasound, and I use it frequently in my office. I have two butterfly ultrasounds. Ultrasound sends sound waves through the body, and the ones, the sound waves, that return to the transducer get converted into an image that we can see on a screen. The important things about lung ultrasound include being able to identify where the parietal and visceral pleura interact with one another. Remember the parietal pleura is the saran wrap that covers the chest wall, while the visceral pleura covers the lung. In between these pleura is called the pleural space. On ultrasound, I can easily identify fluid within the lungs, pulmonary edema, by finding B lines. These B lines can also represent inflammation. I can see consolidation or pneumonia pretty easily. I can also see pleural fluid in the case of a pleural effusion. The best thing ultrasound can do for the lung is identify a life-threatening pneumothorax. Remember the pleura slide against one another. When that sliding is absent, it looks a certain way and may represent air in the pleural space. Remember, if you have air in a space, those two spaces are no longer abutting each other sliding, so there's absence of lung sliding. That's where I have to put a chest tube if somebody is having a pneumothorax. CT scans also identify lung pathology. We can see pneumonia. We can see interstitial lung disease. I've discussed this previously right here. Go ahead and click it to watch. 
but I mainly use a CT to look for pulmonary embolism, which is a blood clot in the pulmonary artery and interstitial lung disease characteristics. CTs also show me where lung disease is located. So when I perform bronchoscopy, I can place my scope to the correct lobe to assess for the presence of disease. CTs also show mediastinal lymph nodes really well. So when I do an endobronchial ultrasound to assess the stage of a cancer by biopsying that lymph node, it helps me identify where to go. The tool is great. MRI has recently been used to help identify lung disease as well. MRI stands for magnetic resonance imaging, and this produces sectional images in any spatial direction. The machine creates a magnetic field, which makes protons behave for a certain amount of time. Then as they return to their normal state, an image is captured. It's complicated to explain, but when we use MRI, we're going to use it if CT is contraindicated. Remember, CT gives off radiation. The way we use MRI in interstitial lung disease is by inhaling a hyperpolarized xenon-129 gas as a contrast agent during the MRI. What this actually does is when we take the image, it helps us identify interstitial lung disease and idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis a lot earlier than CT does. This may actually lead to better outcomes in this particular disease state. I really appreciate you guys joining me today on Medicine Deconstructed, where we talked about the different imaging modalities to evaluate your lung. Stay tuned for the next episode. Make sure you subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Medicine Deconstructed.